Imperial College on November the 6th, 2010 was the venue for a lively presentation by Martin Edge and Alex Mustard. Taking turns to present ideas around achieving good backgrounds, lighting and less common underwater photographic techniques. Martin's talk included videos of himself and Keith Lyle demonstrating some of these techniques. So for those of you that were unable to attend on the day, or if you were there and would like a refresher, these clips follow with a description of what they're demonstrating. The footage was taken on a recent photo trip to Sulawesi. Visibility was not always great, hence why macro subjects were order of the day for photographers. This first clip shows Martin approaching a small school of striped catfish and positioning his strobes before moving in to photograph them. He gets as low as he can so that the background is not just sand but instead has layers of sand, the catfish and blue water, making the catfish stand out against the background. After taking a few shots, he reviews the images underwater before moving off, just in case he's not caught exactly what he's after and needs to take a few more. The second clip shows Keith getting in a similar position, his head almost in the sand, taking shots of the clownfish swimming above their anemone with a pretty blue background. Taking the shot from a higher position often leads to messy backgrounds and poor negative space. The next clip shows Martin photographing a skunk and their many fish. It's positioned on the top of a rocky outcrop, so good buoyancy is required to take the shot from a low angle and avoid the cluttered background, taking the shot at eye level to the fish. One finger is carefully positioned on a rock or dead piece of coral to steady himself for the shot whilst avoiding damaging any live coral. Please always remember that if you can't get to the shot that you want without damaging the coral, then move on and find another subject that's more accessible. To achieve the dark background, Martin uses a fast shutter speed to reduce ambient light from the distant background and lights the subject with his strobes. Martin's next subject is an octopus. They're not the easiest of subjects to photograph, especially when they're moving around amongst clumps of algae or black volcanic sand. So Martin gets as low as he can, follows the octopus with his camera ready and waits for the octopus to move into an area that's clear from algae, giving the octopus a clutter-free background in the photograph. Snoop photography is very popular at the moment. It uses a fine beam of strobe light aimed carefully at a subject, creates an image that has black backgrounds, little if any backscatter, and makes the subject seem to jump out at you from the photograph. Keith's photographing a tunicate, which once lit correctly shows the delicate veining and makes it look like it's glowing. This is an ideal technique for isolating a subject on an otherwise messy and distracting background. The diameter of the opening determines the size of the subject you can shoot. Finer snoots like the one Keith's using in this clip are ideal for showing fine detail in subjects like nudibranch gills. A different way to achieve dark backgrounds and avoid messy negative space is by using inward lighting. In this clip, Keith has pointed a single strobe back towards the housing, being careful not to see the direct light from the strobe through the port. He then takes a series of shots of a stargazer varying the angle of the strobe. The photographs show the different spread of dark backgrounds that can be achieved simply by varying the angle of the strobe.
The first thing you need to do for motion blur is change a few settings in your camera. You need to set the camera up with a longer exposure than normal. Adjusting it to 1 15th of a second is a good place to start. Make sure the flash setting in the camera is on the rear curtain sync option. Set the focus point on the subject that you want to freeze with the flash. Then as you press the shutter, rotate the camera about a quarter of a turn until the strobe fires. The movement is a bit like turning a steering wheel. This should freeze the subject and blur the background. This technique is easier when using a wide angle lens and can also be done with movement in any direction. Some cameras nowadays have additional features such as image overlay. This is where you select any two photos in your camera and combine the two to end up with one shot. You can't move the subjects around in the photographs, so you need to ensure they're in the right place on the screen when you take them. To set this up in the menu of a Nikon D300, you first select image overlay. Click OK and a screen comes up with three boxes. Click OK on image 1, then choose the image you want to use and click OK. Then move the cursor over to image 2 and click OK again. Select the second image, click OK, then move the cursor to the right hand preview option. Then if you're happy with the result, click OK and it'll come up full screen on the back of your camera. Another option available in some cameras is multiple exposure. This allows you to combine up to 10 exposures taken consecutively in a restricted amount of time to create a single image. If you're using the Nikon D300, go into the menu, move the cursor down to multiple exposure, then click OK. Move the cursor to the number of shots, click OK, then increase the number to the desired amount, and click OK again. Move the cursor up to done and click OK for the last time. This takes you back to the main screen and you're ready to go. This is a photo which has two exposures of the same width coral and goby, positioned slightly differently to make it look like it's one photograph. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and that it's given you a few ideas to experiment with. These principles and many many more can be found in Martin's latest book, the fourth edition of The Underwater Photographer.